Employees spend a lot of time in the workplace, and correlating wellness goals with work-life balance is a mission critical to driving business outcomes. As business owners, HR experts, managers, and employees, we can all openly agree that healthcare costs are significant, but are simultaneously vital to employee life and a major threat to an organization's profit. A workforce is essential, but a lack in productivity is detrimental. A culture is crucial, but a disengaged population that radiates low morale is a ticking time bomb. Now, having a corporate wellness program is imperative to the foundation of your business. Your guess is as good as mine. Corporate wellness is our focus on this edition. Welcome to Business Insights on PLUS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. The Central Bank of Nigeria retains monetary policy rate at 11.5%, holds other parameters constant. Nigeria's national carrier, among others, were part of business headlines for this week. Here are the highlights. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has voted unanimously to retain the benchmark interest rate at 11.5% while keeping older monetary parameters constant. This was announced by the CBN governor, Godwin Mefeli, while reading the communique at the end of the 282nd Monetary Policy Committee meeting on Tuesday. The MPC stated that its policy over the previous month has begun to show result owing to the 4.03% growth in real GDP and the sixth consecutive monthly decline in headlines inflation. The federal government of Nigeria says it is not in consensus with the International Monetary Fund's economic growth projection of 2.7% for Nigeria for the year 2021. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, made this known during the Nigerian Development Update Report launched for November 2021, tagged time for business as usual. The IMF had recently reviewed Nigeria's outlook projection to a new 2.7% and 2.8% for 2021 and 2022 respectively. But the minister says Nigeria in the last three quarters of this year has hit a 3.3% growth and will improve to reach 3.5% by the end of the year. Nigeria's economy is expected to grow by 2.8% in 2022 on the back of stronger household spending and an increase in crude oil export value. This is according to projections in the Nigeria Country Risk Report by Fitch Solutions. The projections were made following expected growth of 2.1% in 2021 from the 1.9% contraction recorded in the previous year, which was affected by the COVID-19 lockdown measures. According to the report, government consumption is expected to rise in the coming year based on the 2022 budget announcement by the finance minister. The Federal Executive Council FSC approved April 2022 as the commencement date for the operations of the country's national career, Nigeria Air. And this was disclosed by the Minister of Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirika, alongside the Minister of Transportation, Rutimi Amechi, and the Finance, Budget and National Planning Minister, Dr. Zainab Ahmed, in a meeting with newsmen after the FEC meeting on Wednesday. The aviation minister revealed that 49% of the Nigerian air project will be owned by strategic equity partners and 46% by Nigerians, while the federal government will own 5% of the shares. The federal government has announced the launch of an enhanced e-passport, which they say will improve the passport application process for Nigerians at home and in diaspora. The rollout of the e-passport was conducted at the Nigerian High Commission in London, United Kingdom. 
in a statement on Tuesday, the Minister of Interior Affairs, Ogbeni Raufa Regbeshola, assured of the federal government's commitment with the enhanced e-passport, stating that the federal government is committed to providing passport to all citizens. Welcome back. Fola Oshoshono is a well-being strategist, an international speaker, trainer, content developer, and principal consultant at Corporate Wellness Consulting. She joins us on the show today as we measure return on investment in relation to having an employee wellness program. Fola, many thanks for joining us on Business Insight on Plus TV Africa. Um, thank you for having me. It's mm. a pleasure to be here. All right, uh, for people who may not really understand the concept as it is, uh, what exactly does corporate wellness entail? Yeah, basically, corporate wellness is employee well being. And employee well being in terms of um, the psychological, the physical, and psychological, that means emotional and the mental well being, social, everything that has to do with employee well being, like a total package. So it is just, it's beyond physical wellness. It's everything that employee needs to be productive at work, basically. So, so invariably, uh, it's about um, making sure that your, your workforce has all that it needs, you know, to ensure to better productivity. Productivity, basically. Okay. So basically, what you're trying to tell me right now is that all employers of labor should have some sort of a corporate wellness program most or plan. definitely most definitely because it's a driver of productivity as i said earlier in the sense that um we you can be at work for instance we employ people for the value they have but they are um, retained for the value they had mm. so how do we move you from being potentially valuable as a, as, a, as, a, as a member of, of, of a team to actually delivering that value that you, that, you, that, you, that you embody. So wellness is actually a tool that can help an employee become, a, like an ordinary employee become a star peak performer. Because when we touch on well-being, we're talking about mental wellness, we're talking about your emotional wellness, and you have to um, be able to get to this part of you for you to actually put your mind to work so if you come to work and all those part of you are, you are kind of distracted that is why we experience presenteeism at work people are there physically but mentally they are absent mm. so it's a, it's a form of um it's like when you say someone is absent you know the person is not physically at work but presenteeism is when you are physically at work, but mentally, you're not even you, adding are not, value you are not adding to value to the bottom line. You are not adding value. So. All right, so basically now, what are the things that um, employers uh, need to know if they have to set out um, uh, a workable you know, corporate plan? What do they need to do? Is it something that uh, they do consciously or they have some sort of goals uh, and um, you know, they need like um, a team you know, to just work this out? Okay, what we encourage corporate executives to do is, one, for it to be effective, because we are talking here on return on investment. Yeah. For it to be effective, there has to be, it has to be championed by um, wellness champions at the workplace, because there, these are people that are passionate about wellness. They might not necessarily be HR executives. Yeah. They are passionate about wellness and how it impacts on a person. So these are, in an, in an organization, for you to actually make it effective, your wellness programs, you have to get a wellness champion that actually is passionate about a people. You know, they are people, they are, they are people, persons. They are, we call them people persons. Yeah. They care about you. They can pick when you, are, when you are not at your best at work. These are people that are generally, um, they want to add value to people. Yeah. So they can help um, start the conversation around wellness and drive it further. Also, it has to be an experience. You have to create experiences about, around wellness at the workplace. And that is what will make it a lifestyle. You, I can come and say, okay, now today we are um, signing up my, we are signing up a team for a gym membership. A gym membership. Mm. If you do not make it an experience, like everybody goes together. Yes. Some people might eventually not even, not want to even come out come. for it. Yeah. So there, there has to be an experience around this. Mm. Let us do it together. It cannot achieve employee well-being in isolation. So it's a teamwork. We have to do it together. That's why you see people work together as a team. We encourage it in workplaces um, to like, 
don't let it be done in isolation. Create an experience around it. And once there's an experience around it, then it becomes a lifestyle. Okay. Because you always look forward to it. You'll be the one asking your wellness champion that when, is, when, when are we having our next walk? Yeah. When are we having yoga session next? So basically, it starts from it being an experience, then becomes a lifestyle, then it becomes measurable mm. when you talk in terms of return on investment. Oh, well, you've, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned um, return on investment. Let's talk about cost uh, implications, uh, if we may. Uh, is it something uh, that's corporate wellness that uh, you know would uh, eat so much to the bottom line of the organization, or is it something that uh, no matter how small you are, you could actually fit it into your own shadow? Definitely. Um, wellness is, as I mentioned, a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And for it to be a lifestyle, it has to be affordable. It has to be something that you can do with little with the minimal budget. So we can start with walks, as I mentioned. We can take a walk. We can have walking meetings. Instead of we sitting, we can stand to talk. And we can, that's, that's very affordable, like for starters. Then we can take it further, like do the, big, the gym memberships, do act, um, experiences like yoga, Zumba. Introduce all these um, activities to the workforce. If we want to actually take it further, make it more exciting and interesting, then there will be a budget that is set aside to him. Mm. Because it's boring if you do the same thing every time. Over and over again. So, but you can start with the basics. Like, let's take a walk, for instance. Yeah. Let's do walking meetings instead of sitting. Let's bring an, um, fine, we have the regular option, options when it comes to meals. Let's do healthier options a day in a week. You know, then it becomes like a lifestyle for an organization. And it starts with the organizational culture. You know, if the C-suit managers are not seeing the need, mm. the, it, will be a, it, it, it will be a difficult um, experience to make happen. Right. Very, very, very interesting. Um, for, uh, but then again, when we talk about corporate wellness, is it just about uh, uh, physical health, uh, in, uh, and ensuring um, that uh, your mental well-being is balanced, uh, ensuring that you're in good uh, uh, form uh, health-wise to be able to you know, meet tasks uh, assigned to you? Or is, is it more, uh, or there more uh, con concerning that specifically? Does it also uh, entail maybe social psycho analysis of um, the worker or just to be sure that um, he has the right temperament you know to be able to deliver yeah i well, i always say that we are humans first before work if you would introduce me now you'd say fola before you now go on as a wellness strategist mm. so even as a human wellness is what keeps us together and the, the truth is beyond the walk beyond work we have life so wellness cuts across your, the work, la, work and life. And there's a driver of wellness, and that is horse, me as Fola. Mm. You know, there's, there's a part of me that is uh, working. There's a part of me that has a family life. So, but there's this Fola, the person of Fola, that needs wellness, that needs to be in a good frame of mind, that needs to know herself. And when you talk about wellness, it, it touches on self-awareness. It touches on emotional intelligence. It touches on every aspect of you that mm. makes you even human in the first place. He talks on your empathy. Are you em on, on empathy? Are you empathic? You know, you need all these soft skills to be productive at work. And wellness actually makes this possible. Because if you are in a good space, in a, if you are in a mentally good space, you can um, work as a team member. If you are not feeling great, not, not all the time, we do not feel great all the time. But because we are mentally aware and we are self-aware that mm. I need to deliver, because first, this is why I'm here. Then you bring everything. You put whatever concerns you have aside. Then you walk. So basically, it is a, it is a total package when it comes to wellness. It affects your work. It affects your life. So mm. it, it's something we cannot... The conversation that we cannot um, say we are having enough of it already. All right. So yeah. it's... So, uh, Fala, I'm going to read something to you. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll just get your reaction concerning them threats to wellness and all of that. You know, uh, someone just said, let me just uh, read verbatim. When done properly, an effective employee wellness program can be the difference between a company with an engaged, resilient workforce and an organization that has unproductive, unhappy employees. So if I should put differently, the threats to not, to not having uh, 
a wellness program in the company might result in um, on productivity and some uh, lackluster attitude uh, of um, workers? It's po yes, definitely. Let me cite an, a personal ex let me cite an, a personal experience. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, my first experience was um, as um, professional was um, in the banking sector, and that experience for me was um, we were they all we were g told to do was to deliver. We were told to deliver. Then I, I was pregnant with my first child. And even while on maternity leave, I was expected to do, to meet my targets. Mm. You know, I felt that was even what actually inspired me to think there is more to productivity mm. than um, bottom get line. bottom line. Mm. There is more, they, they, we have to be innovative. You have to be creative. It does not come when you're under threats okay. that you have to meet the deadline. You have a deadline to meet. You know, those, it puts you under pressure that you cannot even deliver okay. in a creative space. So, um, then I had to just let go, let resign, take care of myself, my child. And fortunately for me, I now got to work in another organization. Yes. That was when I appreciated wellness because I could not even believe the results that I was delivering on. Because naturally, when you are told, do this, do this, but you, are, you, are, you know that you are not under pressure to deliver. You, they are just putting, they put everything in place, all the structures in place to make sure that you are mentally strong, and balanced. balanced to work, to think creatively, then your performance changes at that level mm. because you know you are working from a point of rest, not from a point of ah, pressure, pressure, you know? So it's, 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 it impacts on the bottom line. Mm. It impacts on turn, turn, turnover, you know, staff turnover. Okay. When you are not but, um, put paying attention to the well-being of your... Um, of the, of, they of tend your, to migrate easily. They tend to migrate easily. Mm. And um, uh, the cost of recruiting is even more higher than the cost of maintaining, Ret retaining, retaining staff. your staff. So okay. it's, it's something we should uh, pay attention to. As okay, I just want you to just uh, maybe lay some sort of um, example what you'd um, suggest or propose for uh, maybe an average organization. What would you suggest them do? For instance, uh, a workforce of about um, 20 to 50 people and um, they uh, are interested in getting uh, this um, corporate wellness and plan into the, the day to day or uh, maybe monthly activity. So how often should they have some sort of uh, maybe corporate uh, yoga together, corporate walks or maybe uh, a time out at a gym or maybe would they would, would there be like a provision where they just uh, make some subscription to a place and members could just actually go uh, whenever they like. Or just how does it work? Yes, most organizations do the subscription thing because mm. it's cost effective and you get discounts when you come as a team. Mm. Like you'd, you have to know what your team members, what their preferences are when it comes to wellness and what they prefer and what not. So, but the interesting thing we should note is that as much as we're trying to um, make it part of our corporate culture, it must be consistent. 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 Is the okay. It's not about doing, um, having a wellness week once a year. It's something we should do every day. That was why I touched on be, making day. it a lifestyle. Mm. Yes. We, we encourage, and most organizations are in that space already. They encourage their team members to take the stairs, not the elevator. That is one. Okay. Yes. There are, there are LD bars, LD snacks available at work. And from there, it becomes like a lifestyle. Everybody is conscious. It's about the consciousness that, okay, there are options to living healthy. And, you know, in, in, in doing that, it impacts on the bottom line. I would love to come to work because I know that, okay, beyond work... Something exciting, exciting something new, yeah, you know, something to experience, experience daily. Experience daily. Mm. So it's something that we should... Uh, and it's affordable. Okay. You can just say, okay, for an organization, um, get a, an instructor to come around, a Zumba um, instructor, yoga. It shouldn't al always be chim, chim, chim. Mm. Some, you could even talk some maybe drinking water more or something. Games, mindful games. Mm. We do mindful games. There's mindfulness. Is, it's, it's something we need All right. in times like this. So it's, there, there are exciting things about wellness. All right. It's beyond walking, gym, and okay. all that. So we can explore those options. All right, for that time, all this uh, seems to be running so fast that uh, when uh, you uh, have been fun or just having a very interesting conversation, but we must say a very big thank you to you, you know, for all of the input and uh, the insight you've given to not just the employers, but also the employees, because 
this culture is something that should be imbibed if we just want to have a healthy workforce. Healthy we do workforce. appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. You're welcome. All right, moving on now. The Labour State Governor, Babajide Somolu, presented a budget proposal of 1.388 trillion naira to the State House of Assembly for approval for the 2022 fiscal year. We'll leave you with details of that report put together by Love Ikuku Oyedokun. I'll see you again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Bye for now. The Lego State House of Assembly was filled with state executive council members, lawmakers, judges and traditional rulers who came to hear Governor Babajide Sawonlu present his 2022 budget proposal. The time came for the governor to take to send and presented a spending plan that is 138 billion naira more than that of 2021. The year 2022 budget of consolidation with a budget size of 1 trillion, 388 billion, 285 billion, 459 million, 990.51. This budget comprises a total revenue of 1 trillion, 135 billion, 159 million, 092,822.30. He talked it the budget of consolidation. 564.9 billion naira was budgeted for recurrent expenditure, while 823.5 billion will be spent on capital projects. The budget size is further analyzed as a recurrent expenditure of 41% at 564.93 billion and a capital expenditure of 59%, 59.6% at 823.35 billion. The deficit financing will be by way of combination of external and domestic loans and bonds. The Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Modashiru Obasa, passed a vote of confidence on Governor Babajide Sawonlu for his achievements. But he gave an advice to the Governor. Lagos State has the highest funding debt, of course, this loan has been secret behind most of the infrastructural development we all see all over the state. Nevertheless, we advise the secretary to focus more on the test project that will create job opportunity and reduce bottleneck in movement. That will be geared, that will be geared towards alleviating poverty. The speaker also called on President Muhammad Buhari to work towards reducing unemployment, insecurity and poverty. Unemployment, invitation, insecurity and infrastructural decay in the country is at an alarming rate. As such, I urge Mr. President to work towards rejuvenating the economy. Lagos. 2022 spending plan is called the budget of consolidation because it is meant to help the government perfect on the gains recorded over the years. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyedoku for Plus TV Africa.